So our first order of business is that uh, we're going to go back to our sheet number two, and we're going to jump down to the section uh, set up an Android virtual device. Even if you brought your real device today with, uh, with the cable, don't forget the cable, uh, we still want to get a little practice of setting up a virtual device, so we'll set up a, another one today. This is sheet two, page two, on the section set up an Android virtual device. So basically we need to go back to the folder where our SDK is at, and remember on, on these computers it's right on the C drive, so whatever you're doing you can, uh, you can exit it for the moment. And we'll go to the computer screen, and we'll go to the C drive. Remember in the C drive we have ADT bundle Windows x86, 64, 2014, That's the latest version of the SDK as of now. And um, this is where Eclipse is at in the virtual device driver or manager. So go to your C drive, go to the ADT folder, open the SDK manager. So what did I say when the SDK manager loads up in this room? What do you need to do? Even better, you need to ignore everything. At home, you need to uncheck things and turn them on and off and all of that. But here you can just ignore everything. Just don't do any updates here. Uh, we, um, we, we can ignore any updates. But what we want to do in this screen is go up to Tools menu, Manage AVDs. So we don't need to do any of the updates. The point of us being here is to create a virtual device. So select up on top here, Tools, Manage AVDs. And here's where we can create a, an AVD from scratch, but what's the way we're going to do it? Picking a, a, a template, a, a definition. So switch over to the device definitions tab. And as I said, we're going to use this common one together. Uh, you can use a more powerful one if you want, but what's the one that I recommend we use for this class? Yep, so if you scroll down, there's a 3.2 QVGA ADP2. Not the, a, not the HVGA slider, that's got like a slide out keyboard or something. You want the 3.2 QVGA. So select it, and then on the right side, click Create AVD. We don't need to change the name or device or target or CPU keyboard. We change the skin or else we won't be able to interact with the device. So select skin with dynamic hardware controls. That's, remember we saw this last time, that's where we had this virtual power button and volume button and home button. If we're going to use a camera, we can activate one, and we should get into the practice of, of setting up a camera. Your computers here don't have a camera, so you want to select Emulated. If you're using your own computer and you do have a webcam, then you can activate Webcam Zero. We don't change anything on memory or internal storage, but we do want to insert a virtual SD card any size really will matter, but I say 99 just because it's easy to type 99 on the keyboard. And so the host GPU check mark is if your device runs a bit slowly at home, then you turn that on and it might help you. Snapshots are, remember, we are able to freeze the state of our device at a certain point and revert back to it. We're not going to need it just yet uh, again today because of the nature of what we'll be doing. So I, I'm not turning on any emulation options. Click OK. It'll tell you what you did. That's all the stuff we did here. Click OK. And then we want to run this device, so select it. And on the right side, you've got Start. Click Start. 
So last time we were here, we ignored it, but let me explain what we've got a little bit here. Again, we don't need to change any, any options here, but uh, we've got scale display to real size. So what this would do is, um, when we run this virtual device, it's larger than what the real device actually is, because it depends on your monitor and other factors, mostly resolution. So if you turn on scale display to real size, it will try to represent a much more pixel perfect exact size of a real device on your uh, on your monitor. So if you've got a big old you know 1080p type of monitor with uh, 300 pixels, and you select that, your your virtual device might be really small on screen, but technically the size of a real device as if it was on screen. I hardly use that, but you can if you want to. So I'm not going to turn on scale display to real size. As we use these devices, they behave like, these virtual devices behave like real devices. They start to accumulate browser history, uh, apps that you install. Um, if you change the wallpaper, it, it behaves like a real device. It remembers stuff. So if you want to start over, you know, after a long day of using this and you just want to start with a clean device, you can wipe the user data. We don't need to at the moment because it's a brand new device. And on the previous screen, when we were creating virtual devices, if we had selected to use snapshots, we would have these two options, launch from snapshot, save to snapshot. So again, that's saving uh, our virtual device and a certain state. That would be save it to the snapshot. And then we're able to retrieve that snapshot to sort of undo back to another point in development. So I didn't change anything here, just explaining. Launch. You should get this feedback that it's launching, and then eventually you'll get a virtual device starting up with the splash screen. One way to tell right away if your device is going to run pretty well on your computer is how smooth the... Um, the Android uh, shimmers right here. When this comes up, you'll see. See right here. See how that light, that light goes across it? It's pretty smooth for me. If you try this with a larger device and, and it's kind of stuttering a little bit, that's going to be a preview that as the device itself runs, might, might be slow. I already started already. So when you're at home, how many of you that when you tried this right away, you noticed, hey, that shine isn't moving as fast as it was in class? few of you perhaps. All right, so then since this is a brand new device, it's as if we just turned it on for the first time. Make yourself at home, so click OK there. And when I use a virtual device for the first time, what I like to do is just swipe a couple of screens. Again, it's very smooth. Remember, click, hold, and swipe. I like to do that, and then I like to open the apps app screen. Again, I'm kind of looking at the animations. Sometimes I see on, on some of my older systems, I click that button, everything kind of launches, but then it stutters a little bit until the hand appears. And then I click OK, click Home. The animations are pretty smooth. And the last thing is just launch the web browser, and it's pretty smooth, pretty responsive when it comes to Google, and that's fine there. You can share location if you want, doesn't matter. Go back home, and my virtual device is ready. So did everyone get an AVD running? Question? If you want to slow right down, my computer is like five steps behind you, so... Um, Do you... Pop up like that. I don't have the navigation on the right-hand side. Do it Probably what, what you're missing with, without those uh, buttons is maybe you can activate the right scheme. I can remember... Um,
That's, that's our virtual device running. That's easy. Um, we'll do a little bit of practice about uh, getting a, get a, uh, installing an app onto it. So this is a quick repeat of, next time, of last time. Now, next time when you come back next week, I expect you to do this on your own as soon as possible. I'm not going to go through the steps again. I'm going to be ready to go with a virtual device. So next time you come back, make sure you've got this running and all the instructions are, are on the sheets. So now I'm going to go over to sheet number three, which is set up Eclipse or run Eclipse. So I'm just going to minimize my virtual device. I'm not going to close it because even though it opened up pretty quickly, I don't want to wait next time for it to open again. So I minimize my virtual device. It's still running. Right? Don't close it. What you do want to close is your AVD manager. We're done with that. So close the AVD manager screen. We're not going to do any of these updates on the SDK manager, so don't worry about checking anything on or off. Just close that screen also. This takes us back to our screen where we saw the SDK manager and uh, other folders. Open up the Eclipse folder. And I'm going to be running Eclipse a few times. So little shortcut for you. Remember, you can right-click, pin to taskbar, and that way you won't have to dive into that folder over and over. I think last time you suggested pin to start menu. Either one works, but I kind of like taskbar better because I can see it right away down here and click it. On start menu, I have to first click and then drag up to activate it. Pin to taskbar and double click Eclipse. What do we do about this workspace screen? Just accept the default, so click OK. Okay, so this um, this brings up Eclipse. Uh, everyone in Eclipse? Anyone need help? All right, so one thing we didn't do last time that we'll do together and then move on is the first little chunk of uh, instructions that I have on, on sheet number three, which is uh, installing a plugin that will give us uh, an easier way to edit HTML. By default, Eclipse can edit HTML, but it won't have the color coding, it won't have uh, code collapsing, and all of that stuff we got used to in Notepad last month. So we need to install a plugin here. Uh, so let's go up to the Help menu. We'll select Install New Software. Eclipse is open source and therefore it can pull from a variety of repositories and be updated and improved upon. Those are plugins. They expand upon the capabilities. We need to say, well, what, what site do we want to connect to to get our software? In my instructions here I have, let's select the one that is the Juno site, the Juno repository. So work with Juno. And then this uh, always uh, confuses people, but as soon as you select this, it's going to start to download the list of software and it might slow down. So if you don't have any reaction, don't worry. <coughs> select Juno. And then on the filter here, because there's lots and lots and lots of plugins, you want to start typing in their uh, web. 
So search for web. And again, just wait a moment. You don't have to press enter or anything. Just type web. It's gonna, it doesn't give you any feedback, but it's checking all the possible software that has web in the title. And eventually you'll get a list in that section. So just wait a moment. Wait a moment. I suppose because we're all doing it together, it is taking a while. Oh, I do see feedback down here, actually, if you no notice in the corner, fetching children of Juno. So it is uh, connecting. Is anyone stuck at 40%? Did it, did it proceed from 40% for anyone? Yeah, 45. Yeah. 45. All right, we'll wait a bit more. If it did, proceed. Okay, there we go. So eventually, if you're not quite there, eventually you'll see this. You'll see where it says web, XML, Java, etc. And then you will see a little triangle. You can click the triangle. And then what we want is the web page editor. So turn on the web page editor. Again, if it doesn't quite show up yet, just wait a bit more for your web to, to filter. You'll find the web page editor. You want to turn that on. And then select Next. It's going to confirm that you want to get the web page editor, so we'll click Next again. All right, one moment. So then you want to turn on I accept the terms of the license agreement and finish. Which was the last step you were on? On, on the sheet? On the, on the sheet, which sheet? On the sheet, which one were you on? So this will take a moment to uh, to download. Eventually, it will um, it will finish and it will tell you restart the clips, and then you should restart it and then it will go on. All right, so eventually um, I'm going to have the option to restart. And then what will show up is uh, the ability to edit HTML files more uh, efficiently because now we have the plugin which gives us all of the stuff that we were used to in Notepad. Uh, without this plugin, of course, we could still edit our code, but it'll just be a, that wall of black and white text, which is not very pleasant to work with. With this plugin now, we will be able to edit HTML files a lot easier.
Question. Okay, uh, this is not mission critical just yet. So uh, hopefully during, by our first break, uh, you're able to do it. But again, we'll still be able to edit our code, but uh, it'll just be black and white instead of colors. Question. Yeah, every time we come in, we're going to need to do this again. So this will be something also. I, I'll, remem I'll remind you how to do it one more time next time, but then after that, you'll have to do it on your own if you want this to be set up. And again, it's all in my instructions. So, yes. Yeah, exactly. So whatever you, if you don't have this stuff or a computer capable of running it, you can do it. You can definitely do it here. That's why we have the 30 minutes or so lab time at the end of the day. Definitely. Yes. So if we save the directly, no, uh, how, but you said to save which part exactly? This ADT directory that, that's on the paper right now in the workspace? Probably not, because the ADT directory itself is not the complete folder where everything is saved. Some other stuff is saved to the user folder as well. So I suppose if you take the ADT folder, which is like a gigabyte, and the hidden folder in the user folder, and then come back and put them back in the same place, maybe it'll work. But I don't think this is too much of a problem to install it just as soon as you walk in. All right, so how many of you had a successful result? Did the plugin installed and it restarted? Raise your hand. All right, how many of you still need a little bit of time? Uh, again, this is not uh, Eclipse restarted. That's the closest that we know. I suppose if we go back to the help and look at the list of installed software, it'll be listed there. Yes, maybe somewhere about Eclipse. Somewhere it'll tell us if it's successfully installed. But usually it works once you once it tells you to restart because that was the point of it restarting. All right, so if this didn't quite finish for you, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to move on, but this is on my second part of sheet three right here, create a basic Android project. Again, we, we'll do it a couple of times together, and then you'll need to do it on your own. And this is just for practice about creating a project. Uh, you want to go to File, New, Android Application Project. And we will just simply call this test one again, or anything you want. Name doesn't matter. Package name, technically we could proceed from this point, but it's gonna complain that example is 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 fake. So uh, we'll put com dot your last name dot test one. And everything else, I'm just going to select defaults. I'm not going to worry about creating an icon again. You can play with that or changing anything else. Uh, so go next on this new Android app config project, just next. On the icon, next. On the activity here, I don't suppose it really matters, but as per my instructions, we'll select empty activity. If you put the blank one, you probably will be okay, but you can go back, select Empty Activity. Mm, don't need to rename the class here, so Finish. So we're reiterating, creating an AVD, turning on Eclipse. We're looking for the first time to add the plugin, but then we'll do it again later. Reiterating to create a, uh, a project. Uh, if you get a little red X right here, don't worry, probably, because it's still loading up. And then eventually the red X should go away, I hope. Still thinking. There we go, red X is gone. If you've got a yellow warning, we can live with it for the moment. So notice that. With a brand new clean project, we have a warning for some reason, but don't worry. 
And in order to see the results of this project, well, now we want to run it on our AVD. And remember, every time we come in, everything we did last time has been erased. So this is a good practice, one more time, to create an, a run configuration. <laughs> we need to tell Eclipse, take our project, make it into an Android app, and install it into that AVD. So what we'll do is, this is on my section, create a run configuration. So up here on this run icon, it's, the, it's, the, it's a white triangle and a green icon, but not the one with a little toolbox. That's for something else. You want to click the triangle next to the run as button right there. We don't have any launch history. It forgot everything. So we need to create an, a run configuration again to tell it, take this app and run it on that virtual device. So select run configurations. We want to run this as an Android app, so from the list here, double-click, double-click Android app. It'll say, what name do you want? This can be anything, but I'm going to say we'll call this run on 3.2 inch AVD without the inch symbol. AVD. So now, our menu, next time when we want to do this, will say, run on 3.2 inch AVD. Once we set up our real device, I'm going to have an entry that says, run on LG 730, or you run on Samsung whatever, or you run on Motorola whatever. So here we're all running on the same virtual device. Which project? We've only got one, but we need to browse for it. select test one and then switch over to the target tab what device virtual or real are we targeting because um, it's gonna try to guess for us and I don't like the guess usually so go over to the target tab and this uh, this trips people up sometimes so I'll mention it now and later also eventually when we set up our real device our real device name will not show up here. It shows up in another screen. People always ask me, I thought I installed it. Why doesn't it show up here? It does not show up on the screen. It shows up on another screen. Here it says, well, we can pick this one automatically. Even if we've got the real device set up, it won't show up. Trust me. What we want to select is always prompt. Always prompt to pick device. Once you select that, you can apply and run. We'll get a, pop, a couple of pop-ups here. One is to say, OK, which of your devices is running? Um, you want to select the AVD and turn on the check mark. Use same device for future launches. So click OK. When this monitor log cat appears, select no, don't monitor. Click OK. And then switch over to your virtual device and you will see your Hello World app. Easy.
Well, you know, and, and remember this, I mean, you can install Xcode, and then eventually you'll be able to right. maybe make up iOS yeah. apps too. Um, and so it becomes a great platform for them both. Yeah. We're with Windows for stuff we want to do. Well, I've been doing this kind of this exact stuff that I've been doing. So I can even keep on switching with your activities. And I, I spent about uh, three hours trying to try to do this whole thing work. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, and, and I did, you know, it does generate uh, an app, and so I can't get a Hello World because I'm supposed to be a seven inch tablet that's doing right. it. Right. Uh, but, you know, so it works from that standpoint, but I don't know if there are any details that cause me problems in email. What really surprised me on this one is that my wife got one less year ago, and for the entire field, the film was not seen for this entire yeah, well, yeah, but I did get a journal, what I call super because eventually I will want to burn the stuff like that. So I need to do it. Is there pretty much performance I have to have a package of it. It's a USB 3, so it should be pretty fast. Yeah, it won't be much. It'll be considerably faster than the USB 2. And the USB 1 would have been terrible. But I think USB 3 should, 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 should be faster than the USB 1. The FireWire Hydro Link would be 94, so, uh, which is what I was pushing for like, six or eight years ago. I don't know how much time it took, but it did eventually uh, install the ground matter. Yeah. So nice All right, everyone, I think we're ready to go. All right, so, um, so this is good uh, because. For some people, you were having you were having some weird problem, and my short answer was, "Let's restart Eclipse," and then it worked. So I don't know what sometimes restarting why restarting simply works, but if if that's if something weird is happening for you, just restart Eclipse, and that seems to sometimes fix issues. What also sometimes seems to fit issues is that you you think you're doing everything properly, and and this I still don't know why this happens sometimes, but sometimes you're on this screen here, and then the run button is deactivated. I don't know what that is. So sometimes you just close it and go back to the run configurations and then that wakes it up. I don't know. But that worked for people also. So those are a couple of common things. Could it be that uh, it, it didn't find one of the required uh, values? 
Possibly, because if you don't have a project to run, then it shouldn't let you run something. So maybe that would be a, a, an option there too, a, a reason why. So we're going to see sometimes then that uh, the simple answer is to restart. And then sometimes uh, also one step behind that is to do it again, to go back to that section of instructions and do it one more time, and then it seems to work. And honestly, for myself, that I've done this for a while, sometimes even for myself, the easiest thing is I'm not going to try to troubleshoot this delete it and do it again. And then the second time it works. And I swear I do the same thing the second time, and then it works the second time. So we've got, we've got that running. Uh, that's what we did last time. We'll do something else that we didn't do on sheet number three, which it seems kind of like uh, basic, but it's going to be very important later. If we look on our, our sheet number three, let me pull it up here on the, on the screen. Remember, I'm going to turn on the printer soon so you can print them out if you want. But on my sheet number three in the section, I guess I should number the subsections too, but on the section called Rename Project, that's what we're about to do. We're going to rename our project. Right now it's called Test 1, but I'm going to call it something else. The point of that is, later on we're going to see, once we get to the part where we start with Cordova, we, we will need to rename our project. What Cordova is, is basically a template that will allow us to convert our HTML projects into Android projects. So we're going to start with the Cordova template. We're not going to go to File, New, Android Project. That starts a Java-based Android project. We're going to go to File, Import, Cordova, and that'll give us a template that will allow us to use HTML. The problem is that the template is called Template, or Example, or something. And that's going to be the name of our app. No, I want the name of the app to be my app, or Victor Campos' app, or you know whatever name you want your app to be, not example. So it's important to know simply how to rename the project, and it's not a matter of just renaming one thing. We need to rename. We need to change the name of four things, because an Android project is complicated. So we're going to go through this process of renaming this project that really doesn't have anything important, but we will need to do it later when it is much more important. So. We're going to change four things. So here in Eclipse, the first thing is, if you have any files that are open over here, I recommend that we close them. Mine has two tabs open, mainactivity.java and activitymain.xml. Close those two tabs, close those two files. I feel safer working with some of this deep level stuff when I don't have a file open. You've probably experienced that when you're trying to delete a file and it's still open in Photoshop, it complains, or whatever software. So that's, that's what we did here. We closed the files. Then what we want to do on the Package Explorer, which lists our current project, Test 1, you want to right-click the topmost folder, which is the Test 1 folder. And at the bottom we have prop... Uh, I mean, in the middle here, we have Refactor, Rename. Refactor rename. So this this name that we're changing is the internal name that Eclipse sees as it uh, keeps track of all your projects. But let's say we wanted to give this a new name. We, we want to give it today's date. We want to call this October 09. This, we don't want spaces. We could add a space, but we don't want spaces. Because when we create a project from scratch, from going to File New, uh, this, this name here has no spaces. So we type a new name here, we can use capital letters. And the default should be Update References, so if, if the Test01 name was found in other parts of the app, it should change it for us, but it really doesn't. That's why I have more instructions. But you want to turn this on, and then click OK. Now right here, I have to stop that sometimes, and as I was testing this over the weekend, again, I don't know what these gremlins appear, why these gremlins appear sometimes. Did anyone get a weird error message right off the bat at this point? Good. Yes. Now, the one difference that I saw on the uh, on the Mac version of Eclipse was there was no checkbox for that, and it also did not say anything about a Java project on there. It did successfully re rename it, but uh, but there but there were those differences in the interface. 
And did the other steps work okay? Seem to. Okay, well. Find out kind of odd. Sure. <laughs> We'll find out soon, yes. So what happened to me this past week when I did this, it popped up, and then I had like a big red error box, and it was weird. But uh, it seemed that worked to everyone. Question? I got it here. Okay. You got the use of error. Let me, let me see if it was the error that I saw. In the Did you All right, so um, we, uh, we changed one out of four things. This is the first one. The second thing is more of an internal value. This is the name that uh, Google will look at once we upload it. So if it closed your project, open it again here, and then we're going to double click to edit the Android Manifest XML file here. This has got some deep level stuff that we'll look at in detail later, but one of the things that it has is the name that Google will see. So double click that. Android Manifest XML. And what should show up is this XML file, which uh, it, what's cool is Eclipse can show it to you in a variety of friendly graphical formats or the raw code. We saw that previously. And what we're seeing here on this main screen manifest at the top, it says package. And package is basically the unique name that Google will look at once you upload the app. Hey, that's still got the name of test one, even though I thought I said update packages. Okay, let's fix that. The new name of our app is October 9th. So let's type October 9th, lowercase. So whatever com dot your last name is already there dot leave that and then change it to dot October 9th. Uh, as per the specification. So as per Google tells us to do it. Question. How does it respond to other Not sure. I have to look that up, but it'll probably be okay. I wouldn't put it until I look it up to get the real answer, but it might work. Question. Well, this is a standard do uh, reverse domain name, so uh, it wants to uh, organize you know, it wants to know who is the developer of this app. And usually a way to identify that is by the developer's website. So if I had a website called compost.com, that's my developer website, and my package name here then is needs to be written com.campos. the name of the app. That's just the way that they wrote that the specification is. So sort of the answer is because Google tells us to do it this way. But it's basically our website backwards. If you don't have a website, don't worry, I'm making this up. I don't have campus.com. So for the moment, we're making it up. Why not what? That's too reversed. <laughs> it only wants it reversed. Exactly. It only wants it reversed as in the order of things, not the actual backwards words, like reverse satanic words or something. I don't know. You see that in domain name services as well. Yeah, this is a way to... Because if you organize this alphabetically, if you take all the world's websites, you're going to have, you know, uh, abacore.com and... Uh, you know, whatever dot biz and whatever dot net, but if you organize it by the dot something, then you can organize the world's dot coms into one section, the world's dot bizes, the world's dot nets. So do you have to have com? Can you have biz? You can't have biz. Whatever. Right now, you can make it up to be dot, you know, dot uh, uk dot co, mm -hmm. right? Or whatever, whatever country dot net, whatever. So it's, it just has to be unique. It has to be unique. I think in the UK dot. 
CO would have to be reversed from Matilda. CO dot, it's in real world, it's CO dot UK, so it would be UK dot CO, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question. Um, in the name, I already used some capitals. Should I take, take those out? In the name here, or in no, the name? I named it earlier. So, so that in, in my last name, where you're you have capitals, I have. Uh, your last name. I would put lowercase. The specification, okay. I believe, wants it lowercase. So yeah, okay. put it lowercase. Yeah. Does that mean have to match the letter for it to run, for it to work on here, or is that just for Google? This name, you're saying, does this name have to match this name? Right, for you to be able to run the project. Technically, no, I don't think. I think this is only the name that Eclipse cares about okay. for organization. This is the name that needs to be correct when you want to get on the app stores. All right, so this name that we wrote, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it because I'm going to use it again on another screen. You don't have to copy it. You'll have to type it again. But if you misspell it, that's a problem. So what I would recommend is whatever we typed, whatever you typed there, right-click it, you know, select it, right-click and copy. And then we're going to use it elsewhere in a moment. We need to save this file because Eclipse is reminding us right here, this little asterisk, Eclipse is reminding us we have not saved this file. So go ahead and select Save, File Save, or click the Save Disk. You might get something that pops up like a, this about a launch configuration. Um, just click Yes. That's saying we're going to change the launch configuration for you. Click Yes. Because the launch configuration was previously pointing to a project called Test 1. And now we've got, a, we've got no more project called Test 1. We've got October 9th. I got a big red X here, but I'm not going to worry about it yet because we're not done with my instructions. Who else got a red X there as well? Everyone, okay? Next step. Step five here. We've got a folder called SRC, source. Open that. Look at that. That's still, that's still listing test one. I thought it was going to change all my package names. Okay. Well, we need to change this name, so you want to right-click where it says the old name inside of source. Right-click, refactor, rename. And since we copied this name a moment ago, just paste. As per my instructions, activate rename sub-packages. And click OK. But what about virtual options? No, nope, don't worry about that. So I get a pop up here that package com campus October 9th already exists. Thank you. Click oh, continue. Red X goes away. Or should go away. Okay, so that was three out of four. Uh, yes, on your source here, you want to right click, refactor, rename, and then you want to put that new name there and turn on rename packages, sub packages. So if you look on, on, on your sheet number three, I'm on step number six. Number seven, okay. The fourth thing we need to change is the name in the app. The name that shows up um, here under test one in the app itself and the name that, uh, that will appear also when it's in our app screen right here, test one. To change that one, it's step seven here. So this is gonna be to go into the res folder And then back to the values folder, strings XML. We edited this one time before. So double click strings XML. It should look familiar. This is where we went to change the hello world text. This time, more importantly, we're going to change the app name. So if you select app name, 
On the right side, it says name and value. And again, this always happens to beginners. Let me remind everyone, do not change the name inside of name. That's going to be the name of the variable. If you change that, it will break your app. You want to change the value inside of the name. So leave app name alone, and here you can type October 9th with the space. Yes. This is the name that's going to appear in your app and below your icon. And that was the same as if we had gone to the code view, in the graphic view, code view. If we were in the code view, we would see here string app name October 9th. So we need to remember to save our files like we did last month with Notepad. We need to save our files and then run the project. So because we might be working with more than one file, we might want to get into the habit of selecting the Save All button. We've got a Save button, and then we've got a Save All button. All right, a lot of disks. That's a whole 3.4 megs right there. 4. Point whatever. So we might want to we might want to get used to save all. Save all. And now when we go back to the run triangle again, we don't need to go back to the run configuration screen every time. That's only to create or edit a configuration. We've got already one set up. You see number one there. So all you have to do is select run on 3.2 inch AVD. with you one moment one moment so then when it when it launches then you should have the new name at the top of your app there's October 9th and if you browse back to home in the virtual device and go to your apps you'll see alphabetically October 9th is, is there and also if you go back to the other screen screen uh, page two of my apps huh test one is still there yeah. that's fine that's the nature of it We've installed a brand new app, technically. So the old app is still there. It doesn't replace the old Test 1 app. It's still there. But my new October 9th app, the newer and improved October 9th app, is there. So if you want to get rid of apps, what do you do? Tap and hold, and then put up an install. Uninstall. All right, so a lot of things could have gone wrong, and it seems a few th people need some help because things can go wrong. So we're about to take our, our break, but you see this is why I wrote this down on this section here. That's why we did it together, because once we do this, once we have Cordova, we definitely want to do this. We want to change the Cordova default name from example to the name of our project. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll take a slightly longer break, 15 minutes, because I'm going to turn the printer back on. You might want to print out sheets, you know, four and five. They've been updated. But uh, we'll take a break and I'll help some people out, and we'll be back in 15 minutes, 7.30.